Hi everybody, this is uh, Carlo Berkovich of TheRecord.com with On The Record, our video feature, and we're having a record roundtable today, and that's apropos because we're going to be talking about a huge issue in Waterloo Region, and that is roundabouts. We've got Jeff uh, Outhit here with us, a reporter who's done extensive uh, stories on the issue, and Louisa D'Amato, our columnist, who as recently as this week was, was writing about the topic. So Jeff, maybe you can take us through the whole notion of roundabouts uh, in the region. Sure. Roundabouts are, uh, in this region, a safety measure. Safety initiative, uh, the first one was built, the first two were built in 2004 when they built the brand new Iron Needles Boulevard in West Kitchener and Waterloo. So planners had an opportunity building a brand new road that didn't exist. Why don't we try something different that might be safer? Uh, so they built a couple roundabouts and later added some more as that street opened up. Uh, they liked what they had there and so since then they've also been installing roundabouts uh, in a few places where they replace existing intersections as opposed to building new roads. Uh, there's some misconception there that roundabouts are meant to save money. It's really a traffic safety feature. Uh, roundabouts are fairly expensive to build because they take up more room, so you often have to buy land. They cost a lot to build, and some people say, well, there must be saving money because you're not paying electricity and the traffic lights. But in fact, they light those roundabouts up like Christmas trees uh, so people don't crash into them. So I'm not sure you're saving. You are save some maintenance costs maybe in traffic lights, but really it's traffic safety that's mm -hmm. generating this. The, mm -hmm. the argument is that uh, by the way they operate, and their design, you will have uh, fewer collisions and certainly fewer injuries than at regular intersections. So they started a few, they liked it. Now I believe we're up to 16 regional roundabouts. The cities have got into the game as well, have built a handful of roundabouts. Uh, we're on track to have 30 some roundabouts probably in the next uh, six or seven years. Mm -hmm. Now, just, Louisa, we'll get to you in a second, but Jeff, I know that uh, we're doing this on Thursday, and uh, Jeff, on Saturday, this Saturday, uh, you've got a big feature going in on roundabouts. Can you maybe just uh, shed yeah, a little bit Yeah, we're going to publish uh, a, a, f a graphic of the uh, Homer Watson roundabout, Homer Watson Block Line Road, which is in the news these days, and we're going to provide uh, all the tips to readers on how to drive an, a roundabout, which, honestly, they should already know by now, but we getting complaints that people don't know them. So uh, we're drawing on uh, published information from the regional government mm -hmm. and elsewhere on how to drive a roundabout. So you'll see what this one looks like. You'll get the tips on how you're supposed to get into the roundabout, how you're supposed to get out of the roundabout, and what you're not supposed to do mm -hmm. while you're in it. Uh, and we may also discuss in the story uh, some of the common mistakes that people are making at roundabouts. Yeah, now you mentioned the Homer Watson Block Line Road one, and Louisa, you were writing about that this week. Big controversy yeah. there because it's right near a high school, and uh, there's a lot of sort of I told you so going on in the community. People saying this was the wrong place to build it. Uh, a, a couple of students at least have been, have been hit. Um, and uh, so really, what, maybe take us through that issue, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been borne out. I mean, people did say this is going to happen, and it has happened. Well, in the summer, um, the uh, big intersection outside St. Mary's High School in Kitchener at Block Line Road and Homer Watson, um, a roundabout was installed there. And by the middle of October, there had been two people hurt in the crosswalk. One was an 11-year-old girl who um, rode into the crosswalk on her bike during the summer, and everybody agrees that that's something she shouldn't have done. Um, but the other girl, a 16-year-old, was crossing apparently properly at the crosswalk and was hit by a Grand River Transit bus and is quite badly injured. So this has sort of created a lightning rod for the public. The public has, you know, many people, many, many drivers are a little bit suspicious of roundabouts. Um, I have driven through the roundabout in question on a Thanksgiving Monday when there was nobody around and I was surprised at how quickly the crosswalk appeared and I thought, boy, could I have reacted if somebody was crossing? I don't know if I could have. It's so close to the roundabout. And a lot of people are saying, almost everyone who's responding to the columns, certainly that I've been writing, has, has agreed with me that roundabouts and high schools don't mix. I don't think roundabouts, they're a wonderful way to move traffic, but they're not a good way for pedestrians to try and cross streets. And I think that pedestrians need traffic to slow down and stop when they're crossing. Red lights are good for that in our culture because we, we know to stop for red lights for the most part. Um, roundabouts need to keep the traffic move, moving and that's what they're built for. So, so roundabouts have a conflict of interest. Pedestrians have one interest, traffic has another. And what you're seeing is people just 
just up in arms about this one roundabout mm -hmm. at St. Mary's, and I don't think they will tolerate having another one built outside St. Benedict, which is supposed to happen in a few years. That's in Cambridge on Franklin Boulevard. Yeah, Jeff, your thoughts on this partic particular roundabout, the Homer Watson one? Uh, well, it's clearly got some problems uh, looking back at it. Uh, the thing about roundabouts is uh, it's a big change we're asking of drivers and pedestrians, so it's not incremental. Uh, change usually happens incrementally. This is not an incremental change. Uh, and at all roundabouts, there's been a learning curve. At this roundabout, there's been a much deeper learning curve than anyone well, expected. Why is that this specific one? Is it because the school well, it's is the, there, it's or the it's first, the biggest one, too? It's the biggest one, so in terms of traffic, so it has more traffic than any other roundabout right off the bat. It's also the first one that has three lanes around part of it, so you've gone from a two-lane roundabout, which already perturbed some drivers, to a three-lane roundabout, plus it has more pedestrian traffic, as far as I'm aware, than any other roundabout. So you're adding all those things into the mix. Clearly, in hindsight, the planners didn't foresee how deep the learning curve would be uh, at that roundabout. Uh, I think you're going to find a variety of opinions. Certainly what Louisa is saying is true, that there's all sorts of people now saying that students and roundabouts don't mix. I'm not in that group mm -hmm. myself, because, uh, and it's perhaps because uh, Louisa's point is that red lights make cars stop, and that's what pedestrians need. The reality is that, uh, and you'll see this in my column on Saturday, uh, is that once a week, like clockwork, a pedestrian is hit in this community at a traffic signal when they have the right of way. 300 times it's happened in the last six years. It happens every single week, like mm -hmm. clockwork. Uh, despite the fact that they have the light, they have the right of way, and they're in the crosswalk. Of those 300 hit, 28 have been badly injured, and one has been killed. Um, we're not, I don't sense the same outrage about those collisions because they happen all the time, so we mm -hmm. accept them. We accept, we think that people, pedestrians at traffic lights are safer, um, and then when they get hit, we wring our hands and say, you know, we need to find a way to make traffic and pedestrians yeah. work together. Uh, so you'll read my column on Saturday why I, I, I'm not persuaded that uh, traffic lights are better for pedestrians than yeah. roundabouts. That being said, there's clearly something not working at this roundabout. Yeah. Interesting thoughts, uh, and we'll read your column on Saturday, of course, with great interest now, but because there is this also this notion that the great thing about traffic lights is that people don't have to think. They just, they just stop or go based on the light, and then around the about they have to think. Yeah, well, that's what you'll see, and, and thinking is a, an underdeveloped driving skill. Uh, <laughs> and, and we need to develop more of it, and that's, in my opinion, why, regardless of what's happened to Homer Watson Boulevard, that's, I see that in any number of criticisms of roundabouts, uh, they do require you to uh, pay attention. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and pay more attention than often you have to pay in a, where a traffic signal, not always. Uh, you know, if you're turning left at a traffic signal and busy traffic and the green sure. light, you have to, there's a lot sure. of stuff going yeah. on there. But often we sail through traffic signals going straight through, for example, and we just drift through them like they aren't there because the light's green and we right. keep our speed up and we don't even pay attention to them. And we, we hoot and holler when we get 10 green lights in a row because that means 10 minutes where we didn't have to think about anything. We just had to go drive in a straight line. At a roundabout, you are asking drivers every two or 300 meters, particularly when they're in a row, uh, like that, you're asking drivers to slow down, focus their attention, get out of, stop thinking about the radio and all that sort of stuff, and pay mm -hmm. attention. And I can certainly see how that's unsettling. Yeah. I also think it. I also think it. It helps us become better drivers. Yeah, and it's a North American car culture thing, I would think too, because roundabouts have long been in Europe, and we're just not used to them. Well, is that partly why um, I, I know in our comment fields, comment fields on the record.com, people just never cease to get tired of talking about roundabouts, no matter how many roundabout stories we run, and we run a lot just because it's a big issue and there's, they're, they're constantly being built. Um, it's just like people just will not stop talking about it, cannot stop talking about them. To what do you attribute that, Louisa? I think it's because it's actually something that people experience, they can understand, and they have ideas about. People have very clear points of view about stuff that they feel competent to talk about. Like they'll talk about, you know, is this person a good teacher or a bad teacher? Because everybody was in school and everybody had a or good teacher. How good a so they like to talk about a good teacher or, or driving. Now, people who have been in roundabouts, we've had so many people give ideas about how to solve some of the problems at this one. And I think it's because it's something that people can actually get their teeth into. And it's easier to talk about that than it is to talk about, you know, losing manufacturing jobs in this mm. region. Yeah, for it's example. very traffic, is yeah. very accessible. Everybody yeah. drives, everybody yeah. has an opinion on how they drive and how others drive. Um, it's it's the ultimate uh, story that way. And yeah. I was interested in part, let me think a little example of, of uh, Louisa mentioned uh, crosswalks and how close the crosswalk was when she went through the roundabout. And, and there's been a number of people who suggested that that block line Homer Watson, that if they put those, round, those crosswalks farther away from mm -hmm. the circle, mm -hmm. they'll be safer because they're in too close, there's too much going on and drivers can't mm -hmm. see the sidewalks in time. 
I can see that argument, but the counter argument I suspect will be that if you put those crosswalks, say, 40 or 50 meters further down the road, drivers are going faster at that point, not slower, because usually we accelerate, it's a bad habit, but we accelerate out of a roundabout to pick our speed up, plus sometimes the two lanes in the roundabout mm -hmm. then narrows to one. So if you move that sidewalk 30 meters farther out the circle, mm -hmm. you're going to get all those drivers who are out of the roundabout, accelerating, looking to merge. The last thing they're thinking about is pedestrians there, plus they're going faster. And one yeah. thing I do know about traffic safety is fast is bad, slow is yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Just to wrap up, I mean, it's a huge issue, and, and has, has the region done anything wrong in this whole thing, Louisa? Well, I think the region is moving far too slow and far too cautiously to try and take some safety measures. I really think that they, they need to look at something more clear, that they need to look at a clearer signal that they're, they're concerned with respecting pedestrian are, are safety. Are they getting bad advice from ex so-called experts? I think their experts are telling them we're going to take, they're bringing in another safety expert to take another look at the whole thing. And I think if one more person gets hit on that roundabout, the public won't tolerate any more of them. I think that the region at the very least should be saying um, that they're going to put temporary stoplights up at say 10, 20 meters before you get to the roundabout, mm -hmm. so that a pedestrian can activate a stoplight by pushing a button and they can go across. Because I, I hear what you're saying about the intersections, but people usually stop for a red light. It's when they make a turn on a green light that the problem happens with pedestrians. So I think that, you know, we are not Europe. We, we don't eat like them, we don't live like them, we don't drive like them, and we need to take s slower steps to become like them on the roads. And I think that, at the very least, they should be putting a freeze on the one in St. Benedict, and they should be putting some temporary lights outside the roundabout so that pedestrians have sa safe access now. They can do that very quickly. And then they should you know, do their safety studies, do whatever they want, just make sure the pedestrians are safe first. OK, Jeff, final thoughts? Uh, well, I don't disagree that, uh, that they need to move quickly on safety things. I also don't disagree that uh, if there's another serious collision in there, that uh, roundabouts, uh, there's I, I notice around about to be now there's a certain amount of informed judicious comment and there's a certain amount of hysteria too about it. Uh, mm -hmm. People get hit in intersections all the time. As badly as this girl got hit there all the time, we don't hear nearly the hue and cry. Doesn't mean they're any less serious. Roundabouts are new. Anything, something goes wrong, it's something new. Mm -hmm. Lots of people change. freak out. So there's, a, there's an aspect of that um, in it. Uh, but yeah, I think they clearly underestimated the learning curve here at this particular roundabout. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure why, but, uh, and the one thing I'd say about the, the students uh, at the roundabout is that uh, roundabouts work in theory. The argument is that pedestrians and drivers pay attention to their own safety. These kids are in high school. We're giving them driver's licenses, and yet mm. they're, we're telling them they're not capable of crossing the road. These are 16-year-old kids, 17-year-old kids. We're telling them they're capable of driving, but we're not capable of crossing the road. I don't... I just have a little bit of a problem. They're not infants. They're high school students. If I was in high school, I would have been humiliated and embarrassed if I'd had to have a crossing guard to get me across a, yeah. an intersection sure. or a roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. Despite the fact that someone was hitting them, and I still want to hear more about how that collision happened. So you have to look at it a little bit, too, about how much of this is the natural reaction of parents to overreact to something, and sometimes in ways that aren't necessarily the smartest or the most mm. helpful ways down the road. We got to. Caution against overreaction, while also I think Louise is right, uh, the changes have to be made. And, yeah. and I, I might not be in the same uh, in the same area, going the same direction she is. Mm -hmm. uh, That's all right. Because I, I tend to see overreaction yeah. sometimes. Uh, yeah. But you know, something has to be done. I do think it's correct. If there's another if there's another serious accident like this one, I think we can we might be able we might be kissing roundabouts goodbye yeah. for a while and that would be a shame mm -hmm. to me i think that would be a step backwards yeah. well of course not let's let's hope we don't have another serious accident there but a fascinating discussion and uh, thank you jeff and uh, thank you louisa Thanks. this is uh, carlo berkovich for on the record <laughs>